Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. We thought that today's episode would be the last installment of the brilliant Firefly Revolt, but we realized that the end would be too long and we needed to split it into two episodes. So this is part one of the final installment, and then the final, final installment will be up really soon. If you haven't already, listen back to the beginning of the story to get caught up. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Brilliant Firefly Revolt Chapter 10 Family Reunion It was Jill's mom who broke the stunned silence that followed. Jill! What do you think you're doing? I came to rescue you, Jill said, aware of how silly that sounded, sitting there bound in their chairs. The Scarlet King dropped the firefly mask to the ground. It rang like a bell on the black volcanic rock. Jill? So, this is my granddaughter, she said, approaching Jill's chair. You look like your grandpa. I'm not sure I care for that. She eyed Jill up and down and then looked around. Where is he, anyway? Why didn't he come himself? She leaned in conspiratorially. Is he somewhere here? Is this a clever trap, girl? A long scarlet finger brushed down Jill's cheek. The armor was smooth and segmented like the body of a lobster. You can tell me. Deary. Jill was terrified, her heart tight and sick, but more than that, she was angry. Grandmother or not, this was the woman who had killed Grandpa Jack and countless others over the years. This was the maniac who was planning on mutating Giga City and its millions. Jill's matchstick of anger scraped along the brittle edge of those thoughts and rippled to angry life. Suit or no, she was powerful. She was strong as the motor and hard as the bit. And dangerous. That, too. At least tell me how he survived the missile, the Scarlet King asked. Jill wanted to explode, to shake her armor and leap into action. She started formulating a plan. Start with the headbutt, try to land on her with the suit, get to the manual release in the armpit. Then what? her Grandpa Jack's voice said in her head. Fight your way free? Swim to Giga City? You're too angry, Jill. You gotta think. Jill pushed back the anger inside her. She swallowed it back down, feeling it burn like bitter bile at the back of her throat, but doing it anyway. It was the hardest thing she'd ever done. Holding the storm of rage in her guts made her want to fly apart, but still, she held. She wasn't going to get out of this by fighting. No, this required a performance and Jill sank into her role. Well, girl, the Scarlet King said impatiently, how did he escape the missile? My sensors assured me. He didn't survive it, Jill said, doing her best to keep her voice even. He's dead. Anne looked up, upset but not surprised. Maybe she already knew. Maybe she was just too worried about Jill. The Scarlet King only laughed and sat back on her throne. Finally, she said. Of course, I was never serious about it back in the day. My daughter needed a father after all. She looked Jill over. So you took up his mantle, is that it? Did he train you to be the next brilliant firefly? No, Jill lied. I just put on this suit to get my mom. I'm good with computers. I use the tracker to find her. I thought about calling the police, but I didn't think they'd believe me. Clever girl. Now, tell me. She leaned forward, elbows on her knees. Did you love your grandpa? With all my heart, Jill thought. I didn't really know him, she said. The lie tasted sour on her tongue. We lived in the city until last year. Grandpa Jack was always busy in his barn. Even when I followed him and found out he was Firefly, he only let me help with the computers. He never let me fly. Jill tried to sound as sulky as possible. She conjured up every spoiled brat she could think of, starting with Madison. She poured it on, adding just a touch of anger to her voice. 
I didn't even get to wear the stupid super suit until he died. Jill, her mom said, but the Scarlet King only laughed again. I can see you have my passion, child. I've seen your school records, too. You didn't think I wouldn't keep at least one eye on my granddaughter. I know your whole sordid career. Constantly in trouble for missing class, for fighting, for wild inventions, for daring to be a rebel. You truly are my blood. She stroked her pointed chin, glaring at Jill, her eyes pale gray moons. Tell me, Jill, would you like to fly every day? To fight every day? To take what you want and never worry about school or work again? That was actually pretty appealing. Jill found herself not even having to lie. Yes, she cried. I want to be a superhero. Let me help you. Jill, please, her mother said, but Jill ignored her. I'm a fighter. I am. Let me have a spot by your side, Jill said on a roll now. Firefly and the Scarlet King together. We could do anything. The Scarlet King, her shrewd old face looking strange in all that armor, laughed again. Yes, I like it. I will rule and you will be my strong right hand, ruling at my side. Is that what you want, Jill? To be strong? To rule? Yes, called Jill, but then she turned to her mother, as if just remembering she was there. What about my mom? The Scarlet King waved dismissively. She can go home. She isn't meant for this life. She's not like us. No, I won't go. Mom, stop, Jill snapped. Then she turned back to the Scarlet King. I want to join. Tell me, what do I have to do? The Scarlet King sat up straight on her throne, her bearing regal. My sweet girl, you need only kneel before me. Jill felt her temper flare again. She let out just a little, like the screaming steam that keeps an engine from catching fire. I don't kneel to anyone. The Scarlet King laughed. The same answer I would give. She considered Jill for a long moment, pale eyes piercing. Finally, she touched the arm of her throne and the lights under Jill snapped off. Immediately, the firefly armor began to hum and sparkle. She felt relief flow through her. The still armor had been like a tomb, and this felt like coming back to life. Harpy and her team are en route to Giga City now, Jill, the Scarlet King said. Watch with me as the bomb is dropped, the spore is released, and the city joins us in our power. Seemingly from thin air, a giant picture snapped to life. On it, Jill could see Giga City in all its sprawling, skyscraping glory. Giant news drones buzzed through the air like mosquitoes, and the Hyperloop shuttles roared from D.C. to Portland. The image zoomed into the heart of Giga City, the Great Bay, the home port of the world. It was bustling with ships and overlooked by row after row of luxury skyscrapers on the shoreline and the financial district beyond. No, Anne said, wild-eyed. Jill remembered she had worked at a hospital near that part of town. Scarlet, you can't do this. Think of the people. That's enough, Scarlet snapped. You're weak, Anne. A goody two-shoes like your father. I won't let them drop that bomb, Mom, I swear it, Jill thought. But aloud, she snarled. That's right, snapped Jill, raising from her chair and picking up her faceplate. You never let me do anything. Jill? Mom blinked and tears rolled down her cheeks. You took me away from Giga City and made me live in the middle of nowhere, and then, when there was something exciting out there, Grandpa wouldn't let me be Firefly because you wouldn't approve. I always just wanted to be free, to be strong. I wanted to defend myself, and instead you made me run away. Well, I don't need to run now. Jill turned to the Scarlet King on her throne. I'm tired of pretending, of running. I know I'm strong, and I want the world to know, too. Good, 
Tell her who you really are. Jill rounded on her mother, leaning close, hands on the chair, and winked. I know exactly who I am, she said, enfolding her mother in a tight hug. Firefly, she roared, and with a mighty peal of thunder, the jets flashed to life. Chapter 11, Into Thin Air After what happened in the Firefly bunker, Jill knew she could never let herself be trapped underground again. That's why, in addition to fixing up all the damage on the suit, she'd added a couple new tricks as well. Like the bunker buddy. As she grabbed her mom and launched towards the ceiling, a silvery disc shot from her back. It collided with the dark rock above and continued upward, humming madly against the stone as it vibrated a path clean through. Jill followed, picking up speed. Mom was screaming in her arms, black rock dust raining down around them. Behind, Jill heard Scarlet King, the Scarlet King, screech in rage. Sorry, Nana, Jill called back. Maybe we'll try cookies and milk next time. As they rocketed up, Jill finally managed to fit her mask back onto the armor. As the suit sealed, the HUD flared to life. Just in time, too, as a second later it was struck with dazzling sunlight as they burst free of the island and curved into the air. Jill! Anne screamed as they wound their way upward. You are so grounded! I'm just so happy you're okay, Jill replied in Firefly's baritone. Jill! Spex's voice crackled to life as she escaped the island's field. Thank God you're okay, and you have your mom. Spex, Jill said, remembering that glowing flower. Harpy's on her way to the bay with a bomb that's going to mutate the city. We gotta stop her. Oh man, let me look. Jill heard him typing furiously, computers humming. Got her on the satellite, but she's not alone. Drop me her position. A small red wing appeared on the horizon, projected there by Jill's HUD. It was Harpy, and she had a ten-mile head start. Good, Specs. Just one more thing. Yeah? Call in the cavalry. You got it, he said, jumping onto another channel to make the call. In midair, Jill slowed for a moment. She adjusted her grip on her mother, making sure she had her nice and tight. Hold on, Mom, Jill said. It's going to get a little windy. Jill, don't you dare. Sorry, Mom, no time. Gotta save Giga City. Jill kicked on the jets, going as fast as she could without hurting her mom. She would have loved to set her down, but there was nothing but empty ocean stretching in every direction. As they flew, Jill cycled up the suit systems, giving everything a shakedown. It felt good, like those deep stretches you see cats do after a nap. You're coming up on them now, Speck said. I see them, Jill replied, the suit picking out three dots on the horizon. Listen, you gotta get the alarm out. In case we don't win, maybe you can evacuate the bay. How am I supposed to do that? You're a genius, Spex. You'll figure it out. Gotta fight now, back in a bit. The firefly armor magnified her stare and the three flying shapes leapt into sharp view. Harpy was in the center. She was magnificent her long feathers and razor talons of vibrant brick red. The brick mutation had given her size, too, her wingspan now stretching long as a city bus. On her left soared a woman of living fire. Her brick head and torso were normal, human, but her limbs burned with a dark red flame that licked at the air like whips. She left a greasy black smoke in her wake that hung thick in the air. On Harpy's other side was a brick red knight, seated on a giant red dragonfly. The knight leaned forward in his saddle, a long lance of cracking energy thrusting ahead. Behind him, the dragonfly's massive gossamer wings buzzed with speed. And there, there, hanging from the talons of Harpy's feet, was the bomb. It was the size of an engine, glowing brick red and held tight with winding ivy. It's almost beautiful, Jill thought. Too bad it has to be stopped. All right, Mom, Jill said. I gotta drop you in the water for a second. I can't risk bringing you into the fight. What? No! Sorry, Mom. Bombs away. 
Jill said, slowing down to release her mother into the waves. She hit gently, splashing into the chill waters of the Atlantic. A second later, the emergency pod Jill had stuck to her back inflated, whooshing into a bobbing life ring. All right, Jill thought to herself. Time to earn this suit. With a roar, she drove herself at Harpy, letting loose a blast of energy from her fists at the same time. The bird woman spiraled, curving elegantly around the fire. It's Firefly! she cried. Get him! The three peeled away in different directions, spreading out in the sky. The Firefly armor tagged them and indicated their flight paths, but Jill found it impossible to track them all at once. Come on! she roared, twisting to keep Harpy in her sights. She lined up a shot, and then wham! The knight slammed his lance into her side, making her shot go wild. She tore his helmet free and then sent him spinning. A second later, her suit's temperature alarms blared wildly as she burst into flame. The burning brick was above her, pouring flames down in. Jill knocked her away, but then Harpy was there, talons punching forward, driving madly for Jill's heart. She got her arm up just in time, and the talons burst through her armor like it was paper. Jill felt stabs of pain through her bicep, hot and tight. Harpy's face pushed in close as they flew. I'm tougher than before and stronger than before. You can't beat me, Firefly! Jill flared her jets, trying to burst free, but the night hit her again. A moment later, the fire returned, burning, alarms blaring. Flight paths everywhere highlighted motion and attack vectors. There was Harpy again, then more fire, the lance. They were everywhere. Jill couldn't get free. Jill, Speck said urgently. Your mom, quick. Breaking into a desperate dive to buy herself some space, Jill looked and gasped. Her mother was there, bobbing safely in the waves but there was a huge shape approaching, a titanic shadow in the water. A hulking shark fin broke the surface, followed by a swarm of whipping tentacles. It was the mutant shark from the island, closing fast. It was going to swallow Mom whole. Where's that cavalry, Specs? On its way. You got this, Jill. Jill turned and dove for her mom as the shark closed in. Closer, closer. The shark was moving like a missile, knifing through the water with unnatural speed. I'm coming, Mom, Jill said. The dragonfly knight came buzzing in from the side. Jill backflipped around him, knocking the knight off balance. The red flame was there, too, but Jill blasted her away with a jet of cryocoolant, never pausing, never losing speed. She gritted her teeth. Nothing could stop her. Nothing. The great shark mouth yawned wide, ocean water flooding in in a rush. Mom was screaming, screaming and staring into the endless black depths of the beast's mouth. Jill reached out, blasting her jets at full speed. Her mom was in danger. Her mom was in danger and nothing could stop her. The suit hummed with energy, rattled with power. The shark closed in. Jill closed in. Mom was there. Almost, almost. Harpy crashed down from above. They collided and spun out of control. Talons and alloy gauntlets screaming against one another in a desperate struggle. Jill lost sight of her mother as the world narrowed to nothing but Harpy's face, sky and ocean blurring to meld in the background. Let go, Jill spat. Never, snarled Harpy. Together, they plunged into the sea. To be continued. Thanks for listening.